Good morning, everybody. This hearing session is now open. You'll have heard this many times already this week. This forms part of the examination of the Merton Local Plan. My name is RJ Aston, and along with my colleague GJ Fort, we are the inspectors appointed by the Secretary of State to conduct the examination and to report to the Council in due course. And the format of the hearing is a structured and focused discussion that we shall lead. And there are some preliminary matters and a bit of housekeeping that we need to deal with first. Um, if I could just have some introductions from the Council, please. Tara Butler, Merton Council. Morning, Mark Warren, Urban Designer from Merton Council. Even from the best season, Merton Council. Thank you. And from those around the table, please. Morning, it's Tony Burton from Mitcham Cricket Green Community and Heritage Civic Society. And Tony Michael, Wimbledon Civic Society. Good morning, Ben Ford from Quad, representing Criterion Capital. And those are appearing virtually, please. Uh, I'll start. Um, Jane Barnett from Samuels Planning, acting on behalf of FNC Commercial Property Holdings in relation to their uh, property interests at WI11, Wimbledon. Thank you. How would you prefer to be addressed? Uh, Jane Barnett. Uh, oh, oh uh, miss. That's fine. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else? Right next, I'm Samrita Patel from Savills Planning, representing Clarion Housing Group uh, in relation to their sites at Eastfields and High Path and their general property interests in the borough. Thank you. I'll go next. Um, I'm Katie Parsons. I'm here from Historic England, and I'll pass on to um, uh, Kate O'Donnell. Sometimes it's easier. Uh, just before you do, how, how would you prefer to be addressed? Is it Miss, Mrs? Miss, thank you. Thank you, Katie. Good morning, everyone. Kate O'Donnell, Merton Council. Okay. Thank you, Miss O'Donnell. Um, the programme officer for the examination is Carmel Edwards, who should be the main point of contact prior to and after the hearing, uh, the hearing sessions, and should be copied into all correspondence. Uh, now would be a good time to switch off mobile phones or at least turn them to silent, please. And I'd be very grateful if Miss Butler could again indicate the procedures in the event of a fire, whether any tests are due and advise participants to the location of facilities, please. Thank you, Inspector. Fully accessible toilets are available at the ground level at the main entrance to the Civic Centre, just left of the stairs leading up here. And there's a lift to access the toilets as well. There's a drinking water dispenser downstairs as well. If you can't see it immediately, please ask the security guards. This room has an induction loop system for people with hearing difficulties. There are no fire drills scheduled during the hearing hours today. If the fire alarm sounds, either inter intermittently or continuously, please leave the building immediately by the next, the, the nearest available fire exit without stopping to collect your belongings. Staff will direct you to the exits and fire assembly points. If you're unable to use the stairs, a member of staff will help you. Thank you, Ms. Buller. I just want to take a step backwards. I may not have given enough time for the representatives from MSP and D Consulting for CBRE IM. Do we have Mr. Straw, Mr. Cooper, and Mr. Davis joining us virtually, please? Hi, uh, I think I might be the only one on the call so far. This is Peter Davis from TP Bennett representing CBRE GI. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Okay, so moving on. The hearings are being filmed and live streamed to the council website. Is everyone present comfortable with this? Does anyone else intend to film or record the event? Okay. The matters to be discussed today will be focused questions based upon and taking forward the MIQs and the associated written statements received. Inspector Fort and I are tasked with considering the soundness of the plan in accordance with the criteria of the National Planning Policy Framework and also whether it is legally compliant and the hearings are intended to assist us in this regard. In submitting the plan, the Council considers it is sound and this is the starting point for the examination. So if you're challenging the soundness of the plan, 
then you have to explain why and what changes might be necessary that would make it sound. And we have read and will consider the hearing statements that have been prepared and also the original representations that were made. And there's no need for these to be repeated. Instead, our aim is that the discussion moves on from those documents and deals with specific questions that we have or areas where we consider there's further clarification or explanation required. And at times we may ask for a more general contribution or a summary of your position. And when contributing to discussions, it would be helpful to us if you could stick to the matter in hand and refrain from commenting on unrelated matters. Now, in order to test the plan for soundness and legal compliance, Inspector Fort and I will need to ask questions. You'll have seen that we've been doing this already in our preliminary questions and correspondence with the Council, in the published MIQs and in the previous hearing sessions held, and both the Council and other participants have responded to these. The questions will continue today based on these responses. Anything that is asked, however, should not be taken as demonstrating a particular predisposition on our part, and we'll normally start a topic by asking the Council for responses to questions we have before indicating others to comment. For those of you in the room, if you wish to comment, then please indicate by turning your nameplate on each side, and if you're joining us via Zoom, using the hands up tool. We may also invite contributions from you on specific points where we think this may assist the examination. And in speaking during the hearing, we would request that you are concise and specific. And in particular, if you wish to highlight certain parts of your statements or other documents that form part of the examination, it would be very helpful to Inspector Fort and I if you gave us the reference. Those present in the room should use the microphones when speaking to us, and please ensure that they're positioned close to you so that everyone can follow proceedings. Those joining us on Zoom will have to make sure that they are unmuted when speaking to us, but muted at all of the times. And a gentle reminder to not use the chat function, please, as this is not monitored during the sessions. If anyone joining us on Zoom experiences technical difficulties, they should make contact with the programme officer in the first instance. Now, moving on, it's open to the council to propose further changes to the plan. And we would ask, as usual, that they keep a record of possible changes that arise during the discussions. Any changes that would constitute main modifications would be subject to further consultation. However, no further representations or evidence will be accepted after the hearing sessions are finished unless we specifically request otherwise. Moreover, we are not expecting any further written submissions during the course of the sessions, but we may request further material should discussions indicate that would be useful. And as usual, there'll be a short session at the end of each sitting day to ensure that any suggested modifications or additional items we've requested have been adequately recorded. Are there any questions at this stage about the procedural aspect of the hearings? No. Okay, thank you. In that case then, we will now move on to matter 13. And this is about the plans approach to tall buildings. And as ever, to open the discussion, I'd like to invite the council's general response as to whether the plan's approach to tall buildings is grounded in an understanding and evaluation of each area's defining characteristics in general conformity with the London plan and are the plan's policies relating to tall buildings effective. What I will say is, just before you do, we touched on a few of the uh, issues yesterday in respect of uh, Mitcham Gasworks and, and Benedict Wharf. Um, today's main focus is obviously on Collier's Wood, Morden Regeneration, Zone, Wimbledon Town Centre, and the approach to tall, to tall buildings. Um, the way that we're going to take the hearing session this morning is that we're going to ask some questions about the kind of general approach and policy D12.6 first, before focusing on some more specific questions. And that will include the um, the approach now proposed, as I'll put it, following the statement of common ground with English heritage. And then we will go on to discuss some of the more site specific uh, questions we want to raise in relation to the allocations. So to the council, please, would you want me to repeat the first part? <laughs> yes, please. As ever, just to uh, your general response, please, Ms. Butler, plans approach to tall buildings, whether it's grounded in understanding and evaluation of each area's defining characteristics, general conformity with the plan and are the plans policies relating to tall buildings effective. Thank you. Thank you, Inspector. 
Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity just before we answer to say that we'll be referring to a quite a wide range of documents in the answers. This is because uh, at Regulation 19 stage, it was clear from the GLA's response, at least, that we were not at that time in general conformity on one issue with the London Plan, and that issue was tall buildings. Therefore, a substantial amount of work has gone in to bring us back into general conformity. And therefore, there's a series of documents that we'll be referencing, all of which are in the examination library. So yes, in a nutshell, uh, we do believe that with the main modifications that we're proposing, and with, with the main modification, sorry, the main modifications are proposed in LBM03 and LBM05. Uh, LBM05 is the consolidated plan. And including the modifications proposed in his, our statement uh, of common ground with historic England, uh, that is OD13L. And which, just to clarify, yeah. well, just to clarify for those following virtually, that should be on the examination library. It is, yeah, it's on the examination library. I will say that the modifications in OD13L, our statement of common ground, are not yet in LBM03. So they're extra, if you like. So yes, uh, considering all those documents, we believe that our local plan uh, is in general conformity with the London plan. Uh, we have a statement to that effect. It is in conformity with national policy. It's robust and it's informed by, by extensive evidence relating to the sites in question. We've added uh, clear statements within the plan on specific sites. And we have maps, three maps for specific areas, fairly modest areas within the borough, all contained, uh, those maps are contained within D12.6. Uh, D, um, to indicate exactly where tall buildings will occur. So we believe we've brought all this information together in LBM03 and LBM05 and Historic England's statements of common ground and that we are now in conformity with national policy and the London plan. Okay, thank you. Um, just kind of drilling down a little bit then into, into those modifications. If you could just say a little bit more, please, about the council's justification for the use of the strategic heights diagram for the hearing, please, Miss Butler. Yes, I'm going to start and then move on to pass on to my colleague, Mark Warren. Um, yes, it's clear from the GLA's representation to the council's regulation 19 at September time last year, that we needed extra clarity on where tall buildings were would occur. At that time, you will see in the Regulation 19 version of the plan that some of the site allocations indicate that taller buildings may be acceptable, but it didn't necessarily define what tall, what taller meant, and it didn't really indicate any geographic areas. Um, it's been uh, the intention always was, although it wasn't clear in the plan, that three areas would be so suitable for taller buildings in Merton. And taller buildings are defined in the London plan, that's OD32, as buildings of over 21 metres or six storeys. So those three areas are more than regeneration, and we have evidence in the examination library that I can't put my finger on the reference, but it's the uh, strategic development framework um, and Wimbledon Town Centre, and we have evidence in the future Wimbledon SVD and one site in Collier's Wood, uh, that's CW2. Uh, so those areas uh, were, the, were indicated now through modifications in policy uh, 12D6. Uh, just pass over to my colleague, Mark Warren. Thank you, Ms. Butler. So I think it's quite important to, um, to kind of acknowledge that in Reg 19, 
we had a lot more flexible wording. Uh, we didn't actually show specific locations for um, heights or appropriate heights for, for these locations. And as such, as Ms. Butler already explained, uh, the, the GLA response to Reg 19 um, said that it wasn't in conformity. Just, just for your reference, our wording in um, the Reg 19 was, in our Reg 19 local plan was the draft plan. Oh, sorry, uh, I haven't got it here, sorry, but it, it was just more flexible. In terms of the, the statement of common ground, the GLA's response, they, they asked for three things. One of them was should clearly identify on maps suitable locations for tall buildings, should not support proposals for tall buildings outside of those locations. And the third one was should set out appropriate or range of appropriate building heights in specific locations. So the introduction of the strategic heights diagram was to answer um, the, the, the first and second point, which was to clearly identify and map suitable locations, as well as to set out appropriate heights. Uh, the diagrams themselves have a series of constraints, which we believe any applicant coming forward with tall buildings should consider, such as the conservation areas, metropolitan open land, uh, listed buildings and townscape views. Um, and we've put them on those strategic height diagrams as a starting point to really give steer to future applicants. Um, and also because as a council, we, we really are committed to um, a designer approach to development. Um, and so that's the reason why, why we put in these strategic heights diagrams. Thank you, Mr. Warren. Just bear with me one second. It's, it's okay. It's just while I make a note to ask you a question on uh, a specific allocation later on. Um, and just while I'm doing that, um, Mr. Warren, if you could just for the hearing, just briefly explain a bit of the rationale for these three locations and why they were chosen, please. So um, these locations are chosen, or they're supported by the character study, which uh, is reference um, 12D1. Thank you, Ms. Butler. Um, the character study um, is, a, is a starting point. It's, uh, it looks at the borough holistically. It also um, begins to um, look at the MPPF changes in 2021, which looks at, which puts emphasis on um, design guides and codes. So by introducing this design guidance, we, all, we align with the MPPS vision in, in, in the changes in, in 2021 changes. Um, so within the character study, they did a, a, an overarching character assessment of the borough. And alongside that, there was sensitivity mapping as well as suitability mapping for tall buildings. These three town centre locations fall within um, the preferred locations for tall buildings, therefore supporting their locations for, for tall buildings. Um, as well as in terms of the London plan, um, policy D3, looking at optimization of, of, of housing, um, these locations have got good accessibility to public transport, um, walking and cycling um, to open spaces. Um, so that's why these three locations have been um, highlighted as appropriate areas for tall buildings. Thank you, Mr. Warren. I'll, I'll bring you in in, in a minute, uh, Ms. Butler. But in, in terms of the, so we've heard that the character studies is an important piece of evidence that supports your approach here. Um, there's, there's the Wimbledon SPD uh, and then the, the modern strategic development framework as well. Was there anything um, specifically um, relevant to Collier's Wood that's been produced and, and, and supports supports the approach in the plan? We haven't produced a specific piece of evidence rel relative to the one site in Collier's Wood that's within the strategic heights diagram and indicated for tall buildings. I uh, would just say that as my colleague, Mr. Warren said, the borough character study is a starting point and it looks at not just the physical character, but also the socioeconomic character of the borough. And it isn't the only piece of evidence we've used. We've also used our, for example, our conservation area character appraisals. That's 12 D9 in the library. And as you rightly said, Inspector, 5D1, the Morden Strategic Development Framework, and 9D1, the future Wimbledon SPD. Thank you, Ms. Butler. We will come on to the second uh, uh, questions one and two, which are more about the, the local context and understanding of the area in a moment. 
Um, I will invite some general views um, in a moment, but first I'd like to hear from uh, Mr. Davis or one of his colleagues. Um, I understand, Mr. Davis, you, you had some views on this matter, a strategic heights diagram in terms of Morden, perhaps more suited now to a discussion on tall buildings than in matter 15, perhaps. Is there anything you wanted to add um, at this stage, Mr. Davis? Hello, yes, sorry. I'm answering on behalf of uh, colleagues who are having difficulty um, with the technical uh, issues of, of joining. Um, I mean, the crux of the matter for, for um, my client is that uh, we feel the, uh, the way the area has been defined on the key diagram uh, regarding tall buildings for, for, um, for Morden uh, is too restrictive. And um, it is uh, at best ambivalent uh, about whether a tall building on the Sainsbury site, which is my, my client's site, uh, is, um, is allowable or not. Thanks, Mr. Davis. Would just now to your first comment, do you want us to park this and come back to it when your colleagues are able to join us? I think that would be extremely helpful. I mean, I think there is a statement of common ground. Council officers can help us with with reference on on this. Uh, so there are uh, matters that have been agreed between the parties, but uh, I think the key outstanding issue is is that. Okay. If Mr. Davis, you just let us know when your colleagues are, um, are with us and, and we'll come back to that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so just going on, sorry, was there any more um, comments uh, that anybody wished to make on the Strategic Heights Diagram before we move on? Okay, no. Um, so, what I, what I just want to talk about now is um, you start off with a, a fairly uh, minor point, but an important one nonetheless. Um, Miss Butler, this this tall, not taller, um, is that better classified as a main modification than an additional modification? That's something that the council might want, wish to reflect on. Yes, we'll reflect on that. Mr. Michael, good morning. I must say I'm still quite unclear uh, about what tall buildings are. Um, the council rightly says that the uh, London plan 2021 says that boroughs should define what a tall building is for specific localities. The reference for that is 3.9.3, .3, page 142. And as Ms. Butler correctly says, of course, the reference that the GLA in, in its plan makes uh, is, is along the lines of over six stories or whatever. I don't feel very clear at all that we understand what the council's plan is all about. If by tall, taller and tallest and all the rest, we just mean over six stories. That, that patently isn't the case in the council's uh, case for Wimbledon, for, for example, where I think it says 10 to 12 or something of that kind, and has recently, although we shouldn't be considering this, has recently approved a building which is actually 14 stories. But it's just a question of, do we want clarity in the plan? I would hope that we would want that, and I certainly can't see it at the moment. So defining what these various phrases are would be one approach. And secondly, identifying on a map of the borough where buildings of some tallness, where they can be and what heights they can be. Okay, I'll ask Ms. Ms. Butler to perhaps clarify um, the, the approach. Um, and then I'd also like to hear from Ms. Barnett, please. <laughs> Thank you, Inspector. And yes, um, because this has moved such a lot since the GLA's initial statement, I can understand that it isn't easy to follow what's happened, but I would encourage everybody to probably the easiest place to focus is the document LBM05, which consolidates all the changes apart from those very recent ones 
a very recent few with historic England. And the pages on LBM05 that talk about the, that include maps, precise maps with building heights are under policy D12.6. And additionally, for site allocations, uh, it will, where the site allocation supports a taller building, it will clarify what site allocation that is, and it will make a statement as to whether or not it supports a taller building. Just to be clear, all the site allocations that support taller buildings are inside those three areas, uh, more uh, Wimbledon Town Centre, one site in Collier's Wood, and part of Morden Town Centre, apart from four additional sites which are outside those areas, that's MI1, Benedict's Wharf, MI16, Mitcham Gasworks, RP3, Burlington Road, and WI12, Wimbledon uh, Football Stadium. In those sites, it does say up to a certain number of stories. So it does clarify the issue that Mr. Michael just raised and give precise uh, measurements for how tall is tall. And in addition, one of our modifications, which we're considering may well be a main modification, is to tidy up the language between tall, taller, tallest, to just use the phrase tall buildings or not tall buildings. It is worth saying that those maps are very modest areas within the borough, and much of the borough is not considered suitable in Merton's local plan for tall buildings. Okay, thank you. Um, I know you don't have a copy of the, the plan in front of you, Mr. Michael, but um, I am just looking at document LBM 05, uh, as Ms. Butler just stated, policy D 12.6, page 417, chapter 12. Um, those pages up to 41, sorry, 424, deal with tall buildings and include three strategic heights diagrams, Collier's Wood, map of appropriate locations for tall buildings, modern regeneration zone and Wimbledon Town Centre. I don't know whether that answers your, uh, I appreciate there may be other questions arising from that, Mr. Michael, but thank you, Ms. Willow. If you'd like a moment to look at that, Mr. Michael, I could take the question, um, I can give the question to, to Ms. Barnett. Um, Spare me one second. Yeah, I'd just like to um, to invite the, your view, Ms. Barnett. Does this uh, modification address the point you made in your representation on this matter? You are mute, Ms. Barnett. Apologies, Inspector. Can, can you hear me now? Is that clear? Loud and clear. Thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me to, to comment on this. I mean, we, we haven't got any um, major issues with the actual definition of tall, taller and mid-rise under issue one. Um, the, the main concern was um, that WI11 allocation um, had been uh, initially identified as a taller building uh, in terms of redevelopment potential, but modification 9.3, further modification 9.3 has dealt with that and now refers to the strategic height plan for Wimbledon Town Centre with reference to tall building potential, which is uh, satisfying our earlier representations. Thank you. Mr Ford. Thank you. So it's just a point of clarification. Um, I think I've got this right. That D12.6 defines what a tall building is for the whole of the borough, up to 21 metres. And the strategic height diagrams, which refer to uh, story heights, is something separate. So that's not a redefinition of a tall building. It's just where tall buildings um, can be built up to a maximum range as required by the London Plan D9. That, that's, that's my understanding. It was just, yeah. Mr. Warren. 
Yeah, that's correct. So the 21 metres is an interpretation of what's in the London plan um, based off of the GLA's response to stage three. Um, that's borough wide, given that the character of the borough is two to three storeys consistently. And then we focus specifically with the strategic heights diagrams on those three main areas. Mr. Michael, did you want to come back at all? Yes, thank you. Um, all right, so tall buildings are defined as, well, it's around six or seven stories, it's 20, 21 meters from the ground level <clears throat> to the top of the utmost story. Okay. But that covers a multitude of sins. Sorry about the peculiar word, wording, but um, so if it was seven stories, you'd have one view. If it was 17 stories, you'd have another view. I don't feel that this is sufficiently precise in a plan because the criteria seem to me to be uh, pretty much the standard on the, on the right hand side of the page, page, whatever it is, 418. Those are the standard criteria that have been used in London for yonks, uh, sorry, for, for a long time. Have they actually achieved very much? I, I think it's really very doubtful that that could be argued. Um, are they too high? Are they too low? Are they too fat and so forth? Um, when they're seen over the back of a piece of heritage, one argument is, oh dear, that's terrible. Another argument is, well, actually, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't affect the heritage. It's all down to sort of interpretations way down the line. I don't feel that that is helpful here. It, it just leaves things in a sort of um, vacuum where looking at these criteria, There'll be arguments and arguments and arguments, but the people in the locality just don't know where they stand because it'll be between the developers on the one hand and the councils and the advisors on the other. So I feel that a plan should be more precise. And so there should be in each of these three areas, zones or subzones where you specify the heights maximum that should be accepted. Without that, we simply just have a sort of talking shop arrangement. Has this been done before? Yes. In the city of London, for example, when I think it was just before the Second World War, uh, a building was built on Queen Victoria Street by I think the post office. It came up rather higher than all the rest and the view from Blackfriars Bridge of the cathedral was very significantly impacted. What was the result? I think it was a national outcry, of course, and the corporation produced something which is called the St. Paul's Heights Limits. What were they? They were specific AOD, above ordinance datum, heights specified on an ordinance map, which allowed for the views from, in that particular case, Blackfriars Bridge, uh, of the cathedral's upper portions to be uh, unaffected by new buildings. And if you go there now, you'll see that no buildings since 1940s or whatever have gone through that height limit. I feel that that is a very cl clear way of expressing uh, heights. Of course, you've got to get it right. Uh, but in that particular case, it has worked it is in the plans, it has been out in every city plan that has been produced since. And I feel that that precision helps everybody understand where they are. It helps the landowners and future developers. It cuts out all sorts of discussion and it helps the general public to understand this is where we are. At the moment, these uh, references in effect say anything over 21 meters uh, is uh, to the uppermost story is a tall building and from there you're on your own i don't feel that's really good enough yet I insist upon returning this down <clears throat> 
Thank you, Mr. Michael. Before I ask Mr. Warren to respond, I think I'd just briefly say that we, we are going to touch on this issue again in some of the allocations, the representations made by Mr. Ford in relation to kind of ranges of, of heights and stories and, and that type of thing. So, Mr. Warren, if you have a final comment on this. And Yes, I just want to address um, address Mr. Michael's comments on precision. Um, so the, the 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 policy at the moment um, defines in policy wording as well as in the maps um, clear locations using the strategic heights diagrams of of the best composition of tall buildings given an appropriate building heights likely to be acceptable for these um, for these areas. So in actual fact, the strategic heights diagram does provide quite a lot of precision in terms of what we expect uh, to be um, acceptable there. In terms of the borough-wide definition of the 21 metres, um, the reason we went with that was because we thought it best reflected the character of the borough by going with the, the, the minimum definition of a tall building, where we can promote something which is more um, medium density, low rise, which is more in keeping. And we really curated where the tall buildings would go with, the, with those specific three locations. Um, so we'd have put things in place to, to, to direct and control and manage uh, how tall buildings would be composed um, based off good urban design principles. And that's reflected within the strategic heights diagrams. Thank you, Mr. Warren. Um, Ms. Butler, you wanted to add to that? Yes, Inspector, I just wanted to use an example to help illustrate it. For example, the strategic heights diagram for Wimbledon has uh, indicates three areas for taller for tall buildings uh, site wi6 highland house is in one of those areas and it clearly says that the building cluster height range a tall building is defined there as up to 10 stories and then if we go back to site wi6 highland house it will reference on in the section at the end of that site allocation and all the relevant site allocations in, in Wimbledon, Morton and uh, Collier's Wood, it says um, the strategic heights diagram for Wimbledon Town Centre sets the height limit for this site. All building heights will be subject to considerations of impacts on existing character, heritage and townscape in accordance with policies D12.3, ensuring high quality design for all developments, D12.5, Managing Heritage Assets, and D12.6, Tall Buildings, and have regard to the future Wimbledon SPD, which is guidance. I hope this goes some way to assuring uh, Mr. Michael and others that there is a level of certainty and precision proposed now in the plan on heights, a precision of up to, say, 10 storeys or 40 metres, and also that this isn't simply a, that every building in those areas can reach that height that the design does have to consider high quality design, heritage, uh, the surrounding characteristics and the guidance relevant for that particular area. And just taking forward um, a point that Mr. Michael made there about um, heights based on an above ordinance datum. So in, in terms of of the thinking about the um, strategic heights diagrams and the appropriate locations was that sort of height um, metric taken into account so um, i'm sure we'll get onto um onto this uh, later on but in terms of the strategic height di heights diagram we use we use two measurements which are story heights and um, meters from ground the reason being is that it's just more accessible in terms of the language, in terms of people understanding what 14 metres is compared to an AOD. Um, and that's why we, we decided to go with that. Thank you. Before I ask Mr. Michael, uh, Ms. Patel, you wanted to invite you into the discussion, please. Thanks, inspectors. Um, I just wanted to make some general comments um, regarding sort of the, the height threshold that's that's um, set out in the local plan. Um, so, so some of the points that were raised by uh, Mr. Warren and, and Ms. Butler was that the character study is a starting point and um, the local plan previously as drafted was much more flexible than um, 
I guess the sort of latest modified version, which starts to set specific heights. Um, I'm not too concerned with the, the sort of specific heights and the locations identified, noting um, our my clients' interests are sort of specific to to the estates in the main. Um, but just some general comments on that regarding whether the policies are going too far in terms of their prescriptiveness. Um, the threshold set for the minimum, the maximum, uh, sorry, the threshold set for the tall buildings definition is at the lowest end of what the London plan allows. Um, I think the guidance that the GLA are producing, and it's still, it's still in draft, so it's not in its final form, but that talks about where the threshold is set at this lowest level, there needs to be a lot more evidence and site sieving in terms of identifying where tall buildings are appropriate in the borough. Um, and I guess one of the main points I'd want to make is in order for the plan to be effective over its 15 year period, there may be other locations where tall buildings could be acceptable. And does the plan allow for those opportunities to come forward, particularly with the step change in housing delivery that's required in the borough? Um, one of the things that we've been looking at is since the London plan was adopted, there, there has been a number of, lo number of local authorities who have gone through the plan process. And, and this issue has been tackled on a, on a number of occasions where policies have been looked at and found to be too rigid, overly pres pres prescriptive because of um, the fact that the evidence that is undertaken at plan stage is quite rightly a high level analysis. And actually, if you pin down to site specific cases, there may be circumstances where buildings that are taller than uh, six or seven storeys as defined in the local plan will come forward. And in those circumstances, whilst it might not be a presumption in favour of tall buildings as, as, as you would put into tall buildings policies, there may be an opportunity to put forward clear and convincing evidence and justification for those taller buildings. Um, I think if, I, if, I, if you look at the character study, for example, there are typologies in the borough which include mansion blocks or linear blocks. There is intensification identified for the corridors, which are not identified for tall buildings. Um, there is also the site sieving exercise where there are there is this sort of consideration of sensitivities in the borough, where there are many parts of the borough which aren't identified as sensitive, and there are even more parts of the borough which are identified as suitable for tall buildings. Therefore, just as a general comment, I think it's I think it's, I think it's important, given that the plan is looking ahead over the 15-year period, there is this step change in in character that is going to occur, occur in the borough, and taking a sort of a positive approach, looking at whether that wording could be made a little bit more flexible. Um, I think. That probably covers some of the points I wanted to get across, but I think I think um, I wanted to raise that now because we don't necessarily have uh, specific points on on a lot of the allocations um, that are going to be talked about today. Uh, thank you for that, Ms. Patel. Um, you either saw my agenda or you read my mind because we do have some uh, uh, kind of questions about that and in relation to the character study when we move on to discuss the local context. But thank you. I've noted those points for now. Um, was there anything else you wanted to to raise? No, I think that's fine for now. Thank okay, you. and what I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Michael to come back, and then I'm going to ask Miss Butler to wrap up, and we'll move on. Yes, thank you. Um, looking at the re revised uh, material for, for which, thank you. Um, I'm still s stuck with um, on page four hundred eight. Um, policy D 12.6, the council's phrase, um, it will generally support tall buildings and so forth. I think that that gives the wrong emphasis. What we seem to be hearing uh, today is that there are only three areas in the borough that the council's plan wants to see, let's call them taller buildings. Um, and those other three identified, right? Um, at the moment, the council rel is relying, it seems, on uh, anything over 2100 meters or whatever uh, will be assessed against certain criteria okay well uh, my view would be of course that's far too wide but let us park that one uh, but if you still have a phrase in the plan that it will generally support tall buildings i feel that that runs counter to what we're, we're actually seeing here today on the contrary there should be a phrase in the plan which says uh, 
apart from those three areas, the council should generally um, be against, uh, would not support or whatever tall buildings, because that, that seems to me to be to, to hang all together. Um, I can't see how supporting taller buildings on the one hand and restricting them into three areas, these two sets of phrases don't seem to me to be particularly um, logical. So at policy D12.6, I would hope to see the plan saying that uh, there will be a general presumption against tall buildings and then go on to the proposals that we've just been hearing about. So essentially, you, you feel there's some confusion potentially for a decision maker in interpreting the policy. Thank you. Ms. Butler. If I could just address Mr. Michael's comment first. Uh, the proposed modification to policy D12.6 part two, uh, that's page 418 of LBM05, starts at part two by saying, the council will generally support tall buildings in those locations set out in part one of this policy where, and then at this criteria A to, oh, so it's not a blanket support, it is, in compliance with character um, with criteria A to O, which is pretty extensive, uh, we will support proposals. It's also important that the MPPF ask the plan to be positively prepared in totality. Uh, so having negatively worded policies is not something that we have pursued in general throughout the plan. And I think that's common for, for all local plans at this stage. Just picking up on Ms. Patel's comments, um, Ms. Patel's right, the borough character study is extremely extensive. It has been prepared um, very robustly. It has sensitive areas and opportunity areas. It looks at all sorts of characteristics, not just the physical, but also socioeconomic and other factors and uh, transport accessibility and the way land is used. Um, the proposals in Merton's local plan are to define tall buildings as six stories or above, 21 meters or above, based on the predominant character of the borough as being of two to three stories in general. That on its own still allows a doubling of story heights from an average of two to three stories to six stories. And um, we feel that in this local plan, that is still could or could arise uh, a significant change to the characteristics of the borough as promoted by the London plan. Ms Patel's right that all of London, including Merton, has seen a significant shift in housing needs and Merton's share of London new homes has increased substantially from 411 to 918 per year. Uh, we believe though that potentially a, the shift from a characteristic of two to three stories to six stories uh, will is is already significant and we don't believe that our evidence the extensive evidence we've prepared supports uh, a further shift and further uh, areas for taller buildings outside the threes in the strategic diagram plus the four the four sites actually outside the ones defined in uh, d12.6 part one thank you um just, just, just because you've, we have raised this issue of the character study, um, we obviously referred to the character study being robust. Um, I think I'd like to learn a little bit more about the significance of perhaps only 450 contributions to that. Um, accepting that engagement was undertaken. Um, but just on a more specific point, Ms. Patel's point about these other uh, potential locations, uh, Ms. Patel mentioned mentioned mansion blocks and i just wonder if you have a specific view um, on that in relation to tall buildings without knowing a bit more about exactly where Ms. patel was talking about uh, i'm afraid i hesitate to comment geographically i think, I I think mean. it was perhaps i mean Ms. patel will clarify in a moment but i think it was perhaps more to do with Ms. patel was raising this point that there there potentially are other locations from a character point of view, contain built form of a of a of a comparable, perhaps to six stories. 
Um, but before you answer, uh, Miss Warren, I'll just ask Miss Patel to come back in and, and she can clarify anything I missed out. Thanks, inspectors. Um, I, I think it was a more general comment. So looking at the character study page 33, for example, um, it refers to typologies in the borough, the sort of residential led typologies, non perimeter blocks, mansion blocks, which have a typical story height of three to five stories, linear blocks, which have a typical story height of three to eight stories. Um, and then uh, moving forward uh, within the character study, uh, it looks at the opportunities for intensification on uh, some of these. Um, typologies and, for example, in town centres, which are identified for tall buildings in, in some cases, um, it talks about introducing high density typologies, including tall buildings. Similarly, on page one to five, there is an example of linear corridor, corridors and parades, um, and, the, and the character study does identify these for intensification um, through through the growth strategy that's that's uh, presented within it, and on page one two five, for example, it shows examples of how uh, that typology could be intensified, and that's including tall buildings. Uh, similarly, on page one two nine, you've got the campus typology. So it's, it's more of a general comment that th there are parts of the borough, um, and there are diagrams which sit alongside these typologies, which show where these typologies sit within the borough. And, and they're not isolated. There are these typologies across the borough. And in that context, it's, it's really the question around flexibility and uh, not necessarily setting a presumption for tall buildings in other locations, but identifying that if, if tall buildings did come forward in other locations, they would be considered where there's clear and convincing justification and where the criteria um, outlined in the rest of, of policy D12.6 in part two, uh, where there is the visual townscape analysis, the assessment of, you know, all of the raft of planning considerations that you, you'd have to run through, where there are opportunities for a tall building, those would be considered. So it's not a blanket ban on tall buildings every, anywhere else. Having regard, I guess, to the typologies that exist within the borough and the suitability, the high level suitability and sensitivity analysis, which shows that you know, across the borough, there there could be opportunities where there's good public transport access, where you're near a town centre, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I think that probably clarifies the point. But if if there's any further queries for Miss Butler, happy happy to come back on it. Um, well, in terms of the questions, Miss Patel, I think what I think what I'll do is we'll. We're straying into a little bit of the uh, issue too, but, I'm, but, but I do want to run with it slightly further. Um, what I'd like to do is I'd like to invite um, Ms. Parsons to make some comments on the, um, the study. Um, and then I'd also like Mr. Uh, Burton's view as well, um, who outlined, Mr. Burton, you outlined some more general concerns with the character study approach, perhaps be useful and I'm sure you will, to, to use Mitchum as an example um, within that. And then on the flip side of it, um, in terms of uh, uh, Miss Barnett, I believe there was some general support in, in, in Savile's representation um, that it was actually a good, a good study. I'm sure you'll clarify me if I'm, if I'm wrong in that respect. Um, so we'll just take Miss Parsons first. And then I'll give you the opportunity to wrap up at the end, Miss Butler. Um, Miss Parsons. Hello, thank you. Um, yeah, just a just a couple of comments. I think what is helpful about the policy is that it doesn't, you know, in no way does it preclude speculative applications coming forward. How it works is firstly, is your development within an area considered appropriate? And then you still have to apply the policy. Um, if it isn't in an area considered appropriate, speculative applications still come forward and part two of the policy is a good framework for assessing those. The problem is with um, uh, 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 the London plan policy, you still need to, to comply with that. But one of the amendments that we have focuses a lot more, um, puts the emphasis on the sorts of information that applicants ought to be putting forward, which could allow that flexibility to come through. 
And I think with regards to mansion blocks, we think, um, you know, there is a lot of evidence to show that mid-rise buildings, you know, you could go up to six storeys or just below 21 metres within the policy without the need then to trigger the tall building policy. And that is still a substantial development. Um, you can create a lot of, well, often equal densities in a mid-rise situation and we think that's important as well um, in terms of the London plan which requires applicants to consider alternatives to tall buildings so we think that that is all quite helpful. Um, I can go into some of the other modifications now or I can do that at a different time and I can talk we'll about Sorry, Ms. Parson, thank you for that contribution. We, we, we'll come on to the other modifications. It's just because the discussion kind of does jump around a little bit in, on, on a matter like this. Um, but I think we can, we can draw a line under the, the study. Um, did you want to outline some of your concerns with the study, please? Yes, I think, um, I think where the real value of the study lies is in the character analysis of the different locations, the different localities and areas and neighbourhoods within the borough. We think that is a really strong starting point. Where our concerns lie is the second half, which sort of indicates what might be acceptable and not acceptable. We worry about the methodology that the consultants use to draw those conclusions and you know there are some arbitrary things in there for example anything within anything next to green space is suitable things like that we think we need to, that needs to be very clear that this is not policy in effect this is a series of high level concepts that could be useful for applicants in informing their design proposals um, outlining the sorts of things that they need to consider, things like that. Um, and we did have an amendment to that effect um, in our statement of common ground. It was a slight tweak to remove the emphasis on that part of the uh, character study. So it isn't elevated effectively as policy into the plan. It is a set of high level principles about how you could approach tall buildings. We think that's quite important to avoid um, conflicts with what the local plan says. Um, I, I, I understand that might not be the council's interpretation, but that, that was our concern with that part of the character study. So in some ways it's very good, but then in other ways we think it might cause a little bit of confusion. So making clear, as I said, that there are concepts um, rather than a hard and fast way of approving um, a tall building. Okay, thank you, Ms. Parsons. Can I just ask overall then, the approach taken, is it justified based on uh, proportionate evidence? We, I think, um, dependent on whether or not uh, our modifications in the statement of common ground are acceptable or um, considered appropriate, we believe our concerns around soundness would be um, resolved given how heritage is represented in the totality of the plan, um, given that the proposed modifications, as I said, are included, given that we're talking about quite modest areas, and we feel that this is a proportionate approach. We don't think it's an ideal approach, I do have to say that. Um, but at this stage, we um, think it is nonetheless a valid workaround, given that we're at this stage in the plan and it's preferable than having no plan that approach at all or a delayed plan. Um, and like I said, I think um, the modifications do improve the soundness of the plan in that it makes a more explicit link to significance to help set a positive strategy. It makes specific reference to the need to consider cumulative harm, which we think is, is crucial um, uh, given the situation um, to align with the London plan. That we have an amendment that explains the necessity of good, robust information at application stage, and this ensures that officers have everything that they need to make a sound decision within the context of the policy, and also, crucially, to allow them to ask for more information if they think um, that is necessary, and we think that's important. Um, uh, in terms of effectiveness, we, there's another modification uh, to 
make sure that tall buildings are uh, supported by explorations of alternative building typologies. And as I said, there is a tweak to how the character study is presented in the policy. So given that, uh, we feel that that resolves our concerns. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Parsons. I'm just moving on a bit, just developing that point a bit further, I suppose. So just looking at the, your original hearing statement um, on this matter at, at paragraph 3.2, it says there's a, the lack of almost any evidence to support the site allocations means that the plan is not justified, effective, compliant with the London plan, and it would not set a positive strategy for the conservation of the historic environment. So your position seems to have moved on somewhat since then. Um, so, so what the, the modifications you've touched on, I mean, how would they address that, which, which seems to be, as that's worded there, that seems to be a, a fundamental. Yes, uh, it is. I think in a very binary sense, if asked the question, is there adequate evidence? Our view has been, no, there isn't in the very binary sense, but we still then need to take a proportionate approach relative to the heritage significance that might be harmed. Um, and with these amendments, we think that can do that. Realistically, we can't expect additional evidence to be collected at this point and as I said it's a less than ideal option but it is it is a solution to ensure that we do have um, a plan-led approach and what the amendments do is add an additional layer an additional safety net as it were uh, to ensure that everything then is considered properly at application stage. So yeah, we're, we're very much uh, weighing up the issues with heritage, for example, that the borough doesn't have a World Heritage Site, things like that, um, that we would, we might not be able to come to this view. But as I said, given the totality of the plan, the relatively small areas we're talking about, um, we, we do feel that this is a valid solution. But yes, in, in a very binary sense, black and white sense, Thank you. Um, uh, Mr. Straw, good morning. Um, I notice your, your hand is raised. Um, was this in relation to the earlier point or is it in relation to a point about the character study? Um, I apologise for um, this. I, I couldn't get on the system to begin with, but I have okay. now. Um, I'm just re I'm going back to perhaps the basics on this is the questions um, Question one, issue one, question one, does the government plan to find- uh, Mr. Straw, hang, hang on one moment, please, because you just answered yeah. my question. Is Sorry. this in relation to what we're talking about now in relation to the character study, or no. does it refer to the previous question that you weren't it, here it, for, that your more, colleague um, stepped generic. in and I offered that you'd be given an opportunity yeah. to come back yes. on? It's more generic about um, the general's view about does the development plan to find um, the loca locality sufficiently for tall buildings? Right, I'm going to come back to that point, Mr. Straw, okay. if, you, if you don't That's mind. Yeah, yeah. Because you, yeah. you might want to make a comment as well about yes. the, the, the diagram. Yes. Um, if I could just ask uh, Mr. Burton, if you could outline, and then I'm going to ask Mr. Butler to, to wrap up on that. Yeah, I think you're inviting me to comment on the, the merit to otherwise of the correct study to inform tall buildings, yeah. Um, so we, I mean, we, we, we welcome the production of the character study. It was, it's been long overdue and something which the community has been asking for for years. Um, and uh, there was some significant and welcome work that was done. So about a third of the borough actually had some much more detailed character study work done, which has been overtaken by this study. And that's one of the issues that we have with it. So the document that's been provided as the evidence base as the new character study for the borough in our view, isn't robust in as robust as it should be generically. And then there are some specific issues in relation to tall buildings and specifically in relation to Mitcham. Briefly on the first, because I suspect that's not the focus of your inquiry. Um, it's not 
well supported by uh, expressions of local preferences, um, as expected um, by uh, government policy. Um, the process through which it's been drawn up is not that well informed by uh, local preferences, very limited sort of engagement, despite um, four years of asking for um, a process which would be more um, vigorous in providing that. It doesn't do justice to the previous work on the uh, various neighbourhood based character studies or indeed the conservation area appraisal and management plans. To give an example, in Cricket Green, the description of the character is about 100 and something words in the document. It was about 1400 words in the earlier work that's been binned um, and which we felt was more appropriate um, as, a, as a tool both to inform plan making and to inform um, development management. It's full of various random comments. Um, it includes a reference in Mitchum to Yoki spaces, which is something we've been unable to find on Google. Um, and it fails to acknowledge the difference between Mitchum as a sub area and Mitchum village as the key focus in um, uh, the center, um, despite that being agreed by councillors. Uh, and that leads to further um, confusion. Specifically in relation to, um, to, to tall buildings and some of the justifications that have been presented both the allocation and by developers. Um, the, the document is particularly weak in this, um, this spectrum that it presents of um, the way in which you should characterize different parts of the borough um, and particularly those which need to be quote reimagined. It's a somewhat crude and overly simplistic categorization. It, it's very sweeping. As a diagnostic tool, it, it doesn't really work. Um, places are much more nuanced than that. And we anticipated it will be open to precisely the abuse, abuse that we're now experiencing. Um, if Mitchum needs any form of reimagination, it's more as a 21st century urban village than a uh, descent into the kind of placeless tower blocks which lack any precedence and which will leach its character as currently proposed for Mitchum Gasworks. And then if you look at the work of the character study on tall buildings specifically, um, which I think is the only new evidence since about 2010 that's been presented um, to justify, and that document from 2010 was to inform the last local development framework. So this really is the only starting point, and I appreciate it is a starting point, um, but it is all we've got, um, and it arrived very late on the scene, but it's somewhat circular in its arguments about the, um, some of the site-specific locations for tall buildings as opposed to the more uh, neighborhood based approaches so taking Mitchum Gasworks as an example the map on page 139 of the character study showing the levels of suitability identifies the site of the gasworks as being at the less suitable end um, of the um, spectrum um, except for the fact that it um, is subject to the criterion that the site is allocated in the local plan but the local plan is justifying its allocation for a taller building because it's in the character study. So we find that as a rather circular argument, which doesn't um, persuade us that the, uh, the rigour of the civ analysis, which is necessary for the London plan, um, has been met. Thank you, Mr Burton. Um, I did say, uh, Ms Bonnet, you'd be given an opportunity earlier, so now's your, now's your opportunity, please. Thank you, Inspector. Apologies, I don't seem to have the uh, hand raised facility, so I will be physically raising my <clears throat> my hand in um, in coming to some point if, if that's if that's okay. I've raised it with the program officer as well. Um, it, just in terms of the character study, and you invited me just to, to comment on that in terms of what we've set out in the statement. I mean, we are broadly um, comfortable with the study. We feel that in terms of the level of information that it goes into to support. Um, the guidelines for um, identifying tall building locations as per D12.6, it, it does that, um, it does that function. Um, in particular, in terms of um, Wimbledon Town Centre, it, it looks at the stepping up of the density around Wimbledon Centre, which is, which is right, um, and that's uh, followed through into the wording of, of D12.6. Um, so, in terms of, and sorry, just further, in terms of the impacts, uh, and we'll come on to heritage impacts and certain, certain site allocations around Wimbledon Town Centre, we feel that um, the, the level of um, uh, information provided within the character study is enough because clearly there will be detailed impact assessment supporting application proposals um, post um, 
uh, plan adoption, which will, will be considered in that context. The, the one thing I just wanted to mention um, was um, on the strategic heights diagram for Wimbledon Town Centre, and I think this might apply to other height diagrams, there's reference to townscape views into the town centre. And I know the character study doesn't provide any detailed visual impact assessment to support those townscape views being identified on the diagrams. We've recommended that they are removed and that townscape analysis is dealt with in detail at the point when the application schemes come forward. So that was one particular point I just wanted to raise in terms of um, the character study omitting that um, assessment and for removal of reference to townscape views on the strategic height diagram for Wimbledon Town Centre. And, and then just finally, um, we might be tipping into issue two, but I have got uh, strong recommendations in terms of the references on um, metres and story heights on the height diagram for Wimbledon Town Centre, but I think we'll, we're coming on to that later on. That's correct. Um, Ms Butler? I think what I'd just say, there's obviously quite a bit there, but essentially we've heard uh, we've heard now about the character study, and I suppose the, the the question is 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 that evidence sufficient, if you like? Um, but also as well, um, I just want to ask a couple of just general questions. Um, uh, was it kind of two D desktop based exercise, the character study? were sites visited? I'll let my colleague Mark Warren answer that, including an overview of the engagement as part of the first stage, because um, that also came up in, I think, a, cri a criticism of the engagement on the study. Okay, and if you can incorporate, if it contains any site-specific assessment as well, please, Mr. Warren. I will come back to, to Mr. Straw. Thank you. Um, so just to start with the character study and um, just to give it a bit of context, um, we, when we delivered it, COVID um, hit quite quickly after we commissioned the study. Uh, therefore, the engagement process, which was originally outlined for the methodology of, of the character study, which was a lot more physical, had to pivot quite quickly to ensure that we would be able to engage publicly to inform the character study effectively. Um, so as part of the engagement process, um, over 450 respondents took place. It, it happened across um, multiple different platforms. So there was an online public survey, which over 400 people responded to. There was community group surveys and there was a stakeholder workshop. Um, these three events all were looked at um, and evaluated and their comments were used to inform the character study themselves. Um, it's just important to stress that this happened during COVID um, and to keep the program on, 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 online as well as to inform the, the local plan program as well. Um, it, it, we couldn't pause the character study as such. In terms of site, um, site visits, uh, the consultant did visit sites to take ph photography and to inform how they approached, um, approached uh, the, growth, the growth strategy diagrams. Um, again, um, this was during COVID and during lockdown where we were only limited to a jog a day. Um, so um, it, it, yeah, but that, they did go and visit sites. Um, so yeah, it's, it's in our view that with over 450 respondents um, for the character study, we, we believe that that's quite successful in terms of its reach, especially during the, the challenging times. Um, and then of course the character study went through statutory consultation as well. So it was six weeks um, for people to respond to it also. Okay, and, and, and in terms um, of Miss Barnett's point about the um, about the, the the townscape views in terms of the Wimbledon town centre, so what's the justification for those, please? So the the, the townscape views um, they they were put in place to to really steer how applicants would approach tall buildings. Uh, we quite often find um, when when applicants do come in with tall buildings, um, townscape views are very often not informing the initial design. So it was our strategy to put them front-ended um, to be design-driven, um, to be a design-driven policy to kind of inform applicants to take 
Townscape views as part of the design process from early on, um, they aren't they ha they haven't gone through any formal analysis. So um, that we we will reflect on whether or not you know on 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 whether they should be removed from the from the um, from the strategic heights diagrams. But it's in our view that they they should remain to some extent because I think they they do heavily inform design, and it's something which with any planning application coming forward, um, we'd want to see early on because quite often we don't see that. Okay, so we've, we've heard that it's, it's perhaps not supported by the character um, assessment, but is, is there anything else in terms of conservation area appraisals that might have referred to those types of views? So typically these views um, do respond to conservation areas and open spaces and long linear views and panoramic views um, and they're based on informally based on you know the, the amount of people which are likely to take that view um, and 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 uh, and other other metrics like that um, so they're not completely plucked out of the air but as I said there is no formal analysis on those views okay so you, you said you're going to reflect on those so if you, if you could pick that up in, in actions from this morning's session. Um, yeah, Ms. Bull, if I could just ask for your general response, please, to some of the issues raised when we were discussing the character study. I think that's what you were going to, to do, I think. Yeah. It was. I was just going to pick up on two points from my colleague, Mr. Warren, for clarity. Uh, it's pages eight and nine of the Borough Character Study that set out the engagement. But please be aware that the Borough Character Study is a supplementary planning document. So in fact, pages eight and nine set out the, the workshop, the surveys and the other ways of engaging. But in addition, there were six weeks of consultation, uh, which is not submitted only the adopted SPD is submitted, but it is available on the council's website. It also should be noted that 450 responses is not 450 people. For example, a residence group will represent more than uh, just the one response that we would we would bring through. Um, there is quite a lot in those comments, but I'm going to go through them. I would reiterate what I said at the start of this, that the borough character study is not the only evidence for the location of tall buildings. It's a substantial part of it, but as we referred to, there is other evidence. This includes 5D1, Morden S strategic development framework, 12D9, the conservation area character appraisals, um, OD32, the London plan for a policy perspective, and 9D1, the future Wimbledon SPD. So it isn't accurate to say that the borough character study is the only source. I'd also like to pick up on Ms. Parsons' point that it is not policy. Um, as expressed, I think in Ms. Parsons' hearing statement, uh, there was a concern that it would be considered as policy. Um, it is clearly a supplementary planning document and supplementary planning documents don't override policy. Mr. Burton, mentioned some earlier work that I believe he felt was more accurate and thorough than the work presented. Um, from about oh, over 10 years ago, uh, the council itself started to do a borough character study and we divided the borough up into 36 character areas or neighborhoods. And we went through them very, very carefully. And it was very, very detailed work, Mr. Burton's correct. Um, took 10 years and we didn't get them finished because of the level of detail. And what we started to find is that they were beginning, being overridden by events. So development in your neighborhoods would have changed it before we went out to consultation. We did consult on, I think, six of the 36 and they're all available uh, online under Borough Character Study 2011 to 2015. But the level of detail and the, and the focus as well on very physical characteristics um, meant that actually we needed to look at up-to-date planning guidance on preparing borough character studies. And we needed to achieve something that was right across the borough and not uh, a very, very granular level of detail. 
Um, there was a comment about mansion blocks and building heights and does the character study in fact reflect, uh, you know, is there, are there more opportunities for taller buildings in England? Um, um, I won't reiterate my point about actually setting borough character study and, and looking out the window of this building will inform everybody that the characteristics of Merton are predominantly two to three stories on average, um, with the exception of some super high p areas like Wimbledon Town Centre, Collier's Wood and arguably this town centre. Um, and there are mentioned and therefore uh, setting uh, taller buildings in line with the London plan at 21 metres is already a big jump in terms of the character. It's already that substantial change that is indicated in London plan policies that are uh, promoting housing development. I can't put my finger on the policy reference right now, but there are policies in the London plan that say the character of the area must expect, of London must expect to change if we are to achieve the housing numbers. And really jumping from three to six stories or um, or three to 21 meters is already a jump. Um, on the points about mansion blocks in the character study on pages uh, roughly 28 to 33, um, there are building heights on um, mansion, uh, sorry, a range of building heights are suggested for things like mansion blocks and the characteristics are divided up into different areas. Those ranges of heights range from say three to seven stories. So it's still possible to achieve the characteristics described without necessarily saying that every area proposing this particular typology must therefore be a taller building. So some of the ranges go slightly above the definition of taller building, but the character study piece of guidance and they are ranges rather than absolute um, definitions. I think that might be it. Uh, if there's any points I've missed, if i um, be grateful if you can remind me. Can I make one point? I realised I missed. Uh, Miss Parsons made the comments that initially that um, while she believes that the statement of common ground dated June 2022, which is OD 13L, that's the statement of common ground between us and Historic England, um, went some way to. Uh, went to, to address the issues that she identified in her statement. Um, we would point out that Historic England have been involved throughout and have responded not only to the local plan, but also to the evidence we've been producing, for example, on the future Wimbledon SPD and remembering that tall buildings are, um, more sites are allocated for tall buildings in Wimbledon Town Centre than anywhere else. Um, Historic England was a consultee and as set out in our statement, page 1336 of our hearing statement, Historic England responded to the SPD consultation and said, we very much support the improved focus on Wimbledon's heritage. This will strengthen the SPD and help create locally distinct high quality spaces. The SPD represents heritage well throughout and not simply as a standalone feature. Recognizing the multifaceted role heritage can play in delivering social, economic and environmental progress. Uh, it's a key strand of the MPPF and we are pleased to see this set out in the SPD. And I mentioned that because in the SPD as well, there is guidance on tall buildings, including evidence uh, on page of the SPD, I will find the page, um, which which shows the really detailed work that went into that particular uh, guidance on tall buildings, uh, some of which has been used as evidence for the local plan, very, very specific building heights matters taken forwards. And there's a, a diagram that looks at existing and proposed over tall buildings. So it is the case that historic England have been involved in guidance on tall buildings that we are using as evidence and that supports this plan. Page 48 onwards of the SPD.
Okay, and, and the, the other points, I mean, we touched on the Mitcham site allocations where tall buildings are, are said to be uh, appropriate. Uh, and, and we've heard we've heard the the view that um, that the evidence base perhaps doesn't support that as fully as it might do in other areas. Um, so, have you, have you got any reactions to that, Ms. Butler? Yes, I think as we um, expressed yesterday, it's fair to say that. The only site in Mitcham proposed for the two sites in Mitcham proposed for taller buildings, and uh, that's MI1 Benedict's Wharf and MI16 Mitcham Gasworks. As set out in our statements, MI1 Benedict's Wharf has full, uh, sorry, outline flying permission, which includes scale and massing, um, which is part of the, well, which is the evidence. Um, largely for that of a precise scheme. MI16 uh, Mitchum Gasworks, as we said yesterday, has moved on substantially from last July when the Regulation 19 version was published, and that's through engagement with the landowner. Um, we have spoken to Historic England about uh, their views on, on precise evidence, and as set out in I hesitate to find out where. Uh, there are some long views presented. I'll, I'll find the documents. So quite recently, there are some long views presented on those, on the analysis for taller buildings for that site. Um, it's fair to say those haven't, aside from any work the applicant may or may not have done, that hasn't been subject to consultation. So um, what we can do is reflect and take away engagement on those long views from the taller buildings on site MI16, if that is something we could consider. Thank you, Ms. Butler. Uh, Mr. Michael, I'm going to take your point, and then I'd like to move on to Mr. Straw, and I'd like to take a short break as well at some point. Thank you. It's just, a, just a short point now, and that is that as far as Wimbledon Town Centre is concerned, um, the SPD and so forth, it may have been done this way, that way, and the other way. But one thing, here's a hard phrase, it simply was not informed by the local neighbourhood views. There were a number of admirable set up workshops, set, admirably set up by the council to discuss the future of the town centre, and that would be about four years ago they, they started. It was virtually unanimous amongst the people who were there from a range of backgrounds and local uh, interests that the maximum height should be no greater than the CIPD building, which is actually 22 meters to the eaves. Uh, the word high buildings, tall buildings and so forth always got the, the different view. Uh, but that seems not to have in way, anyway influenced the council because presumably the council in this place decided in another way and so i think the local views very much are along the lines of that spd is not for local people uh, it needs to be changed radically and the uh, the parts of it that relate to uh, bigger and higher buildings uh, these are misplaced thank you mr michael we will um touch on that when we do uh, when we deal with the allocations um, is there any other views on this particular topic that anybody wants to raise? If not, Ms. B Mr. Byrne. Uh, really, it's a question, I guess, as to whether we are going to come back to pick up the Mitchum Gasworks point that that, um, that Tara mentions, because I could respond to what I heard now, or I don't know if you're intending to cover that further later. I'm going to cover the gas work site later. Uh, some questions on capacity modifications. Fine. That's everything. So that might be a good time. Thank you. Um, Ms. Paul, is there anything else that you wanted to add before I ask Mr. Straw to uh, to come back? Just very briefly on the future Wimbledon SPD, page 51, it sets out the existing building heights that will be at 2020 in the town centre, ranging from four stories the cipd building mr michael mentioned is um 
24 meters or six stories the other buildings go up to nine stories existing buildings um, and you'll see that in the future Wimbledon SPD, which proposes buildings as guidance up to 12 stories, so from nine existing to 12. And similarly in Merton's local plan, the heights are, are similar. Um, this is bearing in mind Wimbledon is also the borough's only major centre with a PTAL of six um, and has to, is the economic powerhouse of the borough. And we have to strike a balance between views that we should set a policy that is below the height of existing buildings versus the fact that uh, national and london-wide policy promotes major centers as, especially those as high to ptel as supporting a level of development we believe that the modest increase in building height proposed is uh, proportionate and, and robustly derived mr michael if we could potentially park it, unless it's a brief comment in response, because we are going to discuss Wimbledon. The CIP building, I've measured it's 21.5 metres to the coping. It isn't 24 metres. OK, thank you. Uh, Mr. Straw. Welcome uh, back you, to the here, yes. Mr. Straw. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't think it's moving on. You said you wanted to make some general points, but also yes. um, I just want to come back on this 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 point earlier. Um, I understand that you had some views on the council's justification for the strategic heights diagram, with particular regard to to, to Morden. Um, Mr. Davies did briefly give us a response, but uh, the opportunity is now uh, yours to provide some more detail, please. Thank you, sir. Um... I think the, the general questions are questions one and uh, for issue one, and to some extent issue two, questions one, uh, one and two as well. I think the, the issue that we that we have of concern is that you know is is the is the plan sufficiently clear of where tall buildings are going to be located? And I don't want to uh, go through too much more detail here because I know we're having a separate session on more regeneration zone this afternoon, which um, is more site specific, but. But looking at the, um, the the strategic heights diagram on page one eight two of the uh, submitted plan, um, you see the modern regeneration zone has an area where up to twelve well twelve stories or so are acceptable, and then you've got this dotted line where buildings over over twelve uh, up to twenty two stories can uh, be accommodated. Now I don't think that line is sufficiently clear why they've come to that why the council have come to that boundary delineated between 12 and 22 stories um it's unclear um and it's not sufficiently um well it doesn't give you enough, enough guidance on why why the arbitrary division between 12 and above 12. um i, I question that and it mostly will be looking at that in the future uh, i know that a lot of reference has been going on the character study uh, but then also the council referred to the fact that um of other other matters to consider tall buildings is the strategic development framework and again i don't want to go through what we're going to be talking this afternoon but we do question the status of that strategic development framework for more than bearing in mind it was based in 2019 and it was really just devised by hawkins brown um, to look at the um basically a comprehensive scheme in what i call a wider sense than is now being considered by the council which we which we welcome that smaller sites within the modern regeneration zone are also appropriate to redevelop a freestanding sites. So the, the higher cluster, the dotted line, what is the justification for that boundary? Should it be, we think it should be other, well, it should be light, uh, wider on clearly including the site that we're interested in, in discussing with you about later this afternoon. Um, we don't feel that those um, are sufficiently robust. Um, and the other question I have uh, for the council is that the modern regeneration zone is within uh, a GLA opportunity area. So are we jumping the gun here? Should we not have an opportunity area framework in place before we reconsider within the modern regeneration zone where tall buildings are going to be appropriate? Is that boundary actually sufficient? Have the GLA agreed that boundary? Or if not, have others been properly consulted on that boundary? And should not that be appropriate for an opportunity area discussion? So I do question whether or not the plan is sound, showing that within that area, um, which, which includes actually 
Um, I think that area is based on a, a former Hawkins Brown a master plan concept for wider plan 2019 on the SDF framework. But that was based on and one, effectively one comprehensive scheme uh, led by TfL and London Borough Merton for one big comprehensive scheme of an appointed developer. Um, for reasons we'll discuss this afternoon, we think that is a very aspirational and unlikely to be happening in the future. So the council has tacitly recognised that now by accepting that freestanding sites over 0.25 a hectare can also come forward, which might have appropriate uh, ability to deliver taller buildings and uh, again, meet the objectives of the opportunity area of creating regeneration and much more housing development in high density developments, bearing in mind um, that the site here, modern regeneration, modern regeneration zone is highly sustainable given its proximity to public transport interchanges of buses and, of course, the underground station. So I do question, have we got to the right position here? Is this, is this diagram going to lead to planning appeals or inquiries of why we're in or out of that boundary? Should it be more site specific now? Uh, and should it be looked at as a wide opportunity area of discussion for the future? I think those, those are general points, but I'm, I'm sure, sir, we'll discuss those later on this afternoon, because I, I do accept it's more specific to more than uh, regeneration area and others will be looking at other sites in the in the borough. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shaw. So I think we'll pick up um, the point on the, the opportunity area framework. It's something we discussed earlier uh, in the hearings, just generally in terms of in terms of employment uh, and um, the general conformity with the London plan in those respects. But we'll, we'll pick that up in the the matter uh, 15 session but I think uh, and, and perhaps as well some of the more technical points about the uh, strategic regeneration framework but I think if, if for the purposes of this session it probably be, will be useful to talk about the, the justification for the strategic heights diagram and how the the dotted line has been derived in, in terms of informing those heights in, in more than Thanks. So um, the strategic heights diagram for Morden was um, based off of um, the strategic development framework that the which is as, as Mr. Shaw described was uh, a, a one way of delivering delivering Morden town centre. However, that it was also tested with a heritage review as well as a visual impact assessment. These are documents 5D1, 5D2 and 5D3. So it's safe to say that this massing which, which is, as we said, one way of delivering Morden has been tested from a visual impact assessment wise and visually, sorry, wise, as well as heritage wise. Um, the, the strategic heights diagram does give enough flexibility to deliver different different methodol diff different massing approaches to Morden Town Centre. That's the point of the strategic diagram. The, the outline of MO1, formerly MO4, um, is up to 12 stories and then as in terms of good urban design principles, there's a taller cluster towards the station to mark where the station is. It's also important to note that the boundary line of MO4 steps in where they're towards the north, where it's sensitive as the adjacent buildings are two-story terraces, terraced houses. And the, the, the site in question, which is the Sainsbury site, abuts those two-story houses. So we feel, as, as from the council, um, that 12 stories is the maximum which could be achieved there in terms of justifying other design policies outside of 12.6, such as um, respecting the amenity of neighboring buildings, um, making sure that, you know, that, uh, that the quality of neighboring buildings is, 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 is considered when developing such, such buildings near, near those near, near existing buildings. So we feel as though the, the line which highlights the tall buildings cluster is justified and underpinned by sufficient evidence. Um, and is flexible enough to provide tall buildings and deliver something set different to what is shown in the SDF. So uh, it just just developing that just slightly further. So it is, what's the relevance of um, that being identified? I'm, I'm looking at the um, the regulation 19 version with with the mods included here so what I'm, and, and i'm looking at the diagram so what's what's the um what's the relevance of that being an, an indicative location of tall buildings cluster does that 
does that sort of bake in that flexibility that, you, that you're talking about? So the line itself, um, it, so the line itself represents an area which we believe can support a building of um, up to 22 stories. Anything beyond that line would, would support a building of up to 12 stories. That's what the diagram is showing. Within the lines, where the 12 stories go within the, the MO4 boundary or where the 22 story goes within the dotted boundary, is open to um, scrutiny from, you know, from the app application stage. So can Just I to reiterate, as we said earlier, um, on ALBM05, which includes all the modifications apart from Historic England, Policy 12D.6, Part 2, um, just because a building is defined in part one as up to a certain number of stories doesn't make it a given that 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 will be achieved right across any particular site as a giant slab of, of development. There are criteria A to O um, in policy two, which do set out all the various considerations that uh, somebody would have to take into account when designing a taller building. And we believe that this gives uh, the, the whole policy, part one and part two, give both a level of certainty as to whether taller buildings will be appropriate. And that takes into account, as my colleague, Mr. Warren said, you know, clusters of taller buildings proxim in Morden, proximity to two-story houses, proximity to the registered, historic registered park and garden. But there's also a level of flexibility in that it has to be a pretty good design and consider all the issues in a to O, a part two criterion A to O, to make sure that there is uh, opportunity for the applicant to um, create a really good optimized design uh, that meet all those different criteria as well. Thank you, Ms. Butler. Because that, that was actually a very timely comment, because unless anyone has got anything else to say on the points we've just been discussing, we're going to take a short adjournment now. And when we come back, we're going to discuss those. Uh, policies in a bit more detail, part two in particular. Mr. Straw. Yes, sorry. I think ah, I, right. Ah, Which part did we get to, Mr. Straw? I, yeah. uh, I didn't see your hand go up until after I'd said that we're going to have a short adjournment and then come back okay. and look at part two of the policy in a bit more detail. Um, I, could I just say um, just quickly that I think there's a bit of inconsistency here because the Morden Station planning brief identifies, I'm not going to go on this um, uh, next uh, hearing this afternoon, but the Morden Station planning brief does identify the site that outlines particularly interesting as a landmark building. Um, so I anticipate that's more than 12 stories or could be, but it seems that some, for some reason or other, the council decided to change their minds. And I don't think there's any material change of circumstances in the Morden Station planning brief. So I'm not quite sure that the policy gives sufficient clarity. Uh, because the dotted line seems to be arbitrary. It doesn't take into account change of policy now of freestanding sites being able to come forward. It still seems to be based on a, on a wider aspiration of a comprehensive scheme for one comprehensive development, um, which um, is now policy, not, not the policy approach the council are now taking. So should there be more flexibility and more clarity? of that arbitrary line? Or should we just have an overarching policy that says within the regeneration zone, tall buildings will be considered against that policy criteria? Um, do we have to have this arbitrary division between 12 and above 12 um, uh, story highs? Thank you, Mr. Straw. Um, I've made a note of that point. And what I'm going to ask is that if we could just park that and then return to it when we discuss more than uh, later on, and Miss um, Butler's nodding, so they have a note of that as well. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, it's quarter to 12, and the hearing is adjourned until 12 o'clock. Thank you.